Alrighty. So hi, everybody, and welcome to another great segment in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And today we bring you Sean Marie Turry and Truth is the New Black, which is a thought-provoking fireside-style virtual conversation series. It's real talk about business and life and career, about desire and disappointment, about truth and what it takes to create a life and a work that you love. Mm. So let me tell you about Sean Marie. She is a multi-passionate and multi-talented business strategist who helps businesses get things done and leaders lead better. And she is an irrepressible seeker of the truth. As a master desire map facilitator, she's taken hundreds through her programs and she is the brainchild behind Truth is the New Black. So Sean Marie, tell us what you've got going on. What do you have for us today? Thank you so much, Patty. Gosh, I think I need to take you with me everywhere because that was so beautiful and so seamless. So thank you for that gorgeous introduction, Patty. And uh, yeah, for today's Truth is the New Black, I am absolutely thrilled to invite my friend and colleague and partner in crime and fellow projector. And uh, I, could, I could say a number of other beautiful things about her, but Susie Clisson, who is one of the co-owners of, uh, of um, Gosh, I want to say good year, but Susie, help me out. It's it, it is it is a good year, but yeah. it's We're and you know good year dealer. It's West County Tire. West, <laughs> do you know I I kept Lock. wanting to say free free will and I was like, why do I want to say free will and good year? I don't know. Maybe maybe you should tell John that it's time for a name change. But uh, so it's not it's not free will and good year. Um, but I'm just so thrilled to have you here today, Susie. And she's also uh, a multi-passionate entrepreneur, much like myself. And Susie is a creative at heart. And she owns this incredible company called Sue's Garden. And she does flower preservation. And until you see some of her work, I mean, it is absolutely breathtaking. So, and one of the things that Susie and I have had some fun talking about recently is how she is melding these two parts of her professional career, this incredibly feminine, creative, uh, home-based business that she gets to do, you know, in her leisure and in the comfort of her own home in this gorgeous studio that she has. In fact, I think that's where she is right now. Mm -hmm. And she gets to create these beautiful creations. And then she has this other part of her professional career, which is around uh, tires and automobiles and men working on automobiles. And I'm sure that if there were women who wanted to come and work on automobiles, Susie would be the first one to say, come on in. Um, but just the juxtaposition of those two parts of her life and her being. So anyway, Susie is an incredible human being and I'm so happy to have you here today, Susie. So thank you for being my very special guest for Truth is the New Black. I'm honored. Thank you. You're so welcome. And the and, cutest dimples in Southern California. Oh my God, please. Right. Adorable. <laughs> and uh, uh, Susie and I are actually doing a little bit of a repeat performance. So in addition to being the host for Truth is the New Black, I'm also the host for a, a CWI a uh, women lead radio show called Business is Personal. And Susie was my guest a few months ago and we had so much fun talking about this and both of us agreed that we needed a lot more than a half an hour to talk about this particular topic. So I had, I decided to bring her back for A Truth is the New Black. So our topic for tonight is the get, the get is in the give. I, I'm drinking water, maybe I need to upgrade to wine. Um, <laughs> The get is in the give, and uh, it's an incredibly passionate topic to both Susie and I. It is a philosophy that we both uh, truly live our lives by, that we believe wholeheartedly. And what I thought we could do, Susie, is kind of, I, I want to... I want to come at the conversation tonight a little bit differently, and uh, and you and I do, again, wholeheartedly, really believe in practice uh, and believe in the philosophy that the get is in the give. And what I thought we could do is really begin with the idea or the conversation around believing that to be true and what happens if you find yourself in a place of uh, fatigue 
and you feel that you are really tapped out and you know your heart wants to give and you know that it's the right thing or you know that it's going to make you feel better but like those moments when we just feel like I don't think I have another droplet that I could give to anybody. I'm tapped, I'm fatigued. So, and, and I know this is kind of like, again, coming at it from the other way around, but what happens to this idea of giving and showing up and uh, the idea that generosity is in fact a, a strategic business move, but what, what happens when we just don't have to give and we are just like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to fold for the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, you and I kind of went over that a little bit earlier today when we were briefing for tonight and it gave me a chance to think about a few things. Um, and it's really timely right now. Cause I just got, I just came back from uh, traveling to help my daughter move, which is a huge give on my part. <laughs> <laughs> huge my time and then um i'm also dealing with a big family emergency with my other daughter and have been giving of a lot of my time in that area as well and so it's like talk about fatigue and then coming home and you know the piles of paperwork on my desk and then i've got some fires i've been having to put out um with the chamber of commerce which i am chair of the board on um it's it's sometimes it's yeah there's sometimes you feel like you're giving too much, but um, a couple of things came to me when you um, said you were going to kind of approach this uh, in the way that you have. And I think sometimes, you know, when you have to give, you have to dig when you're in that fatigue state and you've, you've been giving so much, digging really deep, just really digging deep into not focusing on yourself but focusing on where you're helping, where you're able to give, that's helpful. But at the same time, what came to me was giving others the opportunity to support you and help you through it all. Um, to asking, reaching out, asking for support, talking about it to, you know, talking about the fatigue, giving uh, your friends, your loved ones, the opportunity to, to, to help you not feel alone in everything that you're doing, to support you, give you advice, support, sounding boards. Um, and that's a huge part of why we have, you know, our circles of friends. I mean, that's why I'm part of this CWI is to have all you ladies to bounce things off of, to have um, these kinds of support systems. And I think that when you're in that place to reach out and give those ladies, give your support system the opportunity to give back to you is a big, a big part of that. Susie, that's really beautiful. And, you know, I, it, just hearing you say that because what we, you and I did talk a little bit about just checking in and how you were feeling, but what we didn't talk about was what you, how you were going to respond to some of these ideas and questions. And, and I think in hearing you say that, it just is such a powerful reminder that that gives somebody else the opportunity to be the giver, you know, yes. and, and how, how do you feel like how, what kind of receiver are you? Like, are you a good receiver? In the past, I was not. I was one of those women, and I think you can all relate that I've <laughs> got it. I can do it. I don't need your help. I've got this, I know what I'm doing, let me do it my way. But I have learned over the years, um, as I've matured as a, a person, adult woman, that um, there's a beauty in letting people help you and letting people in and giving them their moment to shine where they can give to you and support you. And there's you know, amazing things that can come from that. There's different perspectives and ideas that, that that do lift you up and get empowers you empowers me to do better and to be able to then move forward and give again. Absolutely. And Susie, do you, do you, in your experience, do you feel like there is a way to, because really like tonight's topic is the get is in the give. And so we're talking about right now, like what happens when we feel like we've got nothing left to give, but do you think that there is a way to give and really have no expectations, right? Because 
again, philosophically, and part of my practice is that uh, I believe that generosity is a strategy, but it's also strategic in the sense of being deliberate and conscientious about the giving, but with zero expectation, meaning that if I give to this person, that that person is going to be who I get the return from. Right. right. So, so I'm wondering if there is a way that in your experience to build in a strategy of giving, but have it be completely free of expectation. So our, and all there's, you know, giving in our, all areas of our life. And of course we're a business group. So getting back into business, uh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky strategy to, cause a lot of, uh, business owners, <laughs> corporate uh, leaders have had the strategy of, well, if I'm going to give something, I need to get something back, right? So how do you walk that fine line of living in that, you know, generous space of giving without the expectation of getting something back? Um, and this is kind of the part two of what you and I talked about on the radio show and um, the book that I was reading that um, that was really interesting. And I'll just kind of, I have it right here. It's called The Get, Give and Take. <laughs> <laughs> it's this great book. That, it's a great um, book. It's a rev revolutionary approach to success, give and take. Um, and it's based around business. And it talks about these huge business moguls and corporate people, famous ones that we've heard of in the news and in history um, and the differences on how their uh, strategies worked on when they gave with no expectations of getting anything back and who kind of won out in the end and who kind of didn't win out in the end and how things kind of went. Uh, really interesting in the long run and in the bigger picture, it's the leaders that gave without expecting something back, of course, that came out ahead in the end and really saw amazing things happen to their businesses, to their careers, and all of that kind of thing. So, I mean, you know, and then you talk about, you don't want to give away the farm, right? <laughs> you don't want, you're not going to give away uh, to where it doesn't make sense. Uh, every business needs to have make a profit. Uh, you have to be, you know, smart with your budgeting and all of that. So it's a fine line. And in my business, we have gives in where it's in our customer service. We do the extra mile. And then of course, you know, we never know when a customer is going to come back. If they come back to us, that's part of where the, where the give is in the get. That's part of when you get, you create a loyal customer from your customer service. We've gone the extra mile to take, pick up someone's vehicle, to take them home, to drop them off at work to uh, give them credit maybe sometimes when maybe we shouldn't have, but mm. we've trusted them. But in those different little ways of gives, we've created this loyal customer base of customers that have shared their experiences with their friends. And this is how we've built our customer base over the 40 plus years that we've been in our shop where we are. And, and Susie, would you say that you, because I, I know you personally and you're a dear friend of mine and I know that you and I have both um, really been on this path of like personal development and like really doing like our own work. So would you say that you have, um, it could be a strategy or just an awareness of maybe something that happens for you if you have found yourself in a position where you're like, oh, I think, you know, this is a really great opportunity to be generous or I'm feeling generous or that something kind of, you know, kicks in and you start to have a conversation with yourself on processing, like this is a great time to give or you know what, maybe we need to reevaluate this. Like, do you have a, a practice or, or a way of conversing with yourself or do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and that's where I don't depend on myself and my own decision. <laughs> that's where I will um, consult with uh, my partner, who is my husband, and I will consult with him and uh, show him, hey, what do you think about this or that? And I'm actually in the process of, I want to hire um, a fractional CFO and a 
business coach to come in and to help us with those kinds of things, those kinds of strategies. Um, my husband and I are getting to the time in our life where we're gonna we're needing an exit strategy. So we want to build our business to be in a place where it's where when we are ready to sell it, it's profitable, it's going well. And so part of that is where do we give, where do we not give? And we're gonna need help with that. So again, you know, and there's many times where, you know, we get called up all day long. Can you give to the Boys and Girls Club? Can you give to, can, you know, everybody wants a piece of you. Right. But you, you know, and all of those causes are well-meaning and great, you know, causes and that kind of thing. But you have to stop a minute and uh, see where it makes sense. You know, and, I, and I'd love to kind of expand this as well out of how giving in different ways can still have a profoundly positive effect on our business because I know I used to own an apparel company and I'm back in the apparel business now, which I said I would never in a billion years do again. Never say never. Never say never. Um, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but because uh, in, our, in the early part of our manufacturing, we were manufacturing t-shirts. So we would have people all the time call us and ask us if we would donate t-shirts and it became exhausting right? Like that, that constant, like, um, having to say no became exhausting. And so strategically, one of the things that we did is we created a giving campaign. And so we knew budget wise, like what we could afford to do and what we couldn't afford to do. And, you know, the uh, flip side of that, um, John told me this story years ago, John is my husband. And he's also Susie's husband, but no, sorry. <laughs> Not the same job. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're both named John. <laughs> That's a close group. I told you. That's an element. That's an important element, family. Yes. Close group, but not that close. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm going to compose myself here and take a drink of water. I'm not, I'm not even, I told you girls, I, I should have been drinking wine tonight. Oh, my God. Oh God, that was so funny. And if you knew our Johns, anyway, that was, that was hysterical. Okay. And I'm back. So my John husband, not Susie's John husband, told me the story years ago um, that Microsoft was launching this new product. It was called MySQL. It was a database program, I believe. And um, they were giving it away. They weren't charging anything for it. And no one wanted it. They could not give it away to save their lives. And so they regrouped and rallied and somebody had a brainstorm and said, let's slap a $99 ticket price on it. And it became uh, the number one database used in the world. So I think sometimes we, again, need to reevaluate um, our motive for giving, if it makes sense to give. And I know for any of my sisters on this call uh, who can find themselves at times in that place of being overly generous, of giving things away, of, um, you know, I know that for me, I've tried a few different products at times where it was pay what you can um, or, uh, or doing it on a donation basis. I also, in the spring, wrapped up a program that was called On the Threshold. It was a nine week online uh, gathering for anybody that wanted to join us. And it was twice a day, every Thursday. And I did it absolutely for free. And that was my consciousness. That is the consciousness that I brought to that gathering. I designed it with the intention of doing it for free. I didn't ask for donation. There were no like little like, I wasn't dropping any like hints or, or breadcrumbs like, hey, you can Venmo me or you can PayPal me or you can make a donation. It wasn't designed that way, but I'm doing a, no, a new program which actually launches tomorrow and I'm charging $25 for it. So it's not $2,500, it's not $500, it's $25 because energetically, that feels aligned for me. I also know, you know, speaking from the point of generosity, that it is a two hour workshop for eight weeks. Uh, and whoever attends, they are going to get 
all of me and the and the woman that I'm doing this workshop with like we are bringing it wholeheartedly we're holding nothing back uh, but it feels really good it feels very aligned but by but by having this particular workshop uh, come with a cost made sense to me right like it, it didn't feel aligned for me to repeat that same experience um and so you know for you susie or really for anybody who is is on the call tonight i would i would love to open this up what your experience has been with this idea around the get is in the give and i will i will i will close that thought with this that my experience with this philosophy and it being strategic is really more about, for me, my state of mind, that if I can move into a place of feeling generous, it, it moves me out of a state of fear, right? Because usually for me, if there is a conflict between being generous or not being generous, giving it away or not giving it away, in the middle of that conversation is some kind of fear is some kind of tightening in my throat, in my heart, in my gut, like there is this panic or this pressure or there's something else going on where I'm starting to feel rigid, right? And I'm starting to feel that heat and that intensity that comes for us as business women when we're like, we need to make some shit happen. So when I am in that place, which is genuine, I am probably feeling my least generous because I'm worried. And so some of the things that I can do, if it's not giving a product away or giving something away that is connected to my business, is I can call somebody uh, just to see how they're doing, just to check on them with no agenda, just, hey, I was thinking about you. I've got 15 minutes. I just wanted to check in. How's your dad? How's your mom? How are you? How's your heart? Um, and just have a genuine moment because what it does is it moves me into that place where I am physiologically having a different experience and it begins to just kind of loosen everything up for me and I feel more giving and I believe that when we are more giving we it's easier to receive and that that is Philosophically, I think that that is why we open up those receiving channels when we are in a place of generosity and giving. And I do also think strategically that there is a place for having a giving component built into your business. But what I'm really talking about for me is energetically what that's like, or maybe it's going through Starbucks and it's telling the cashier to put the person behind you to put their bill on your credit card. I mean, it's and I know that might sound really corny and cliche, it's, but it's, it's, you will leave that drive through with a little bit of like a, a skip in your step. Like it just, it feels good to do something for someone that is anonymous or semi anonymous. Like you're not, you know, and I'm not talking like you pull up and you wait for them to like give you the high five. Like you just, you just leave and you let it be what it is. And I think the profound ripple effect that those kinds of acts of generosity have, because who knows what kind of day they're having or who they are or what they're feeling, but they, there is at least the possibility where they might continue that act of generosity onto someone else. And we've seen by what's happening right now in the world, um, what happens when there is this collective consciousness when there is this collective movement, when something begins to happen and we are all activated at the same time, like can, can we even imagine what would happen if we were all to do a random act of kindness at the same time, all over the planet? Um, the vibration of that and the possibilities of that are limitless. And so, you know, the, the act of generosity is definitely connected to business and to receiving. But for me, it's really, it's about creating that open channel. And again, I just know for me that any time that I'm not feeling particularly generous, um, it is definitely connected to some kind of fear. So 
Um, but I would, uh, Susie, I don't know if you have anything that you'd like to add, but I'd, I'd like to throw it back to you and, and open it up to the group if, if anyone has uh, anything that they'd like to share, any questions or just be part of the conversation. Yeah, um, when you were, you know, saying your feelings on, on fear and all of that, it brought up to me, and, and uh, I think we talked about this a little bit on the radio show too, is I, I have a colleague in business and he's very successful. He's been a mentor to me, but I've watched him be very generous with the expectations of getting back what he's given. And I've watched him also become very bitter, mm. very, very bitter when he hasn't gotten back what he's expected is supposed to come back to him. And that's, you know, a trap that I think being generous and being given, giving uh, is, is a danger. And that's where you get that fear and that bitterness. Uh, it didn't work for him the way he was generous. And uh, in the book I was showing you, there's some examples of that, of some very big, Famous people who were, um, one of them was the, what was the Enron guy? Bernie Madoff, like, yeah. ooh. Yeah. Uh, Ken Lay. Yes. yes. He had that strategy as well of being very, very generous. And then it gives examples of other uh, businessmen who were criticized because they gave away some of their secrets or they let somebody know uh, a lead that oh, I'd never give someone that lead. What are you crazy? Mm -hmm. But in the long run, what came back to these people who were generous without expecting anything back, what came back to them was twice fold, you know, from what they ever expect, expected to get back. So there's a, there's a trick to that. Absolutely, Suze. And, and I want to say too, again, from a business perspective and, and for me personally, and professionally as a business strategist that's what I do for a living there is nothing wrong and it's absolutely something that you want to build in is what is the return on my investment right without a doubt like that is just business 101 that being said there is a difference between you know the cost of goods sold and the income coming back in and looking at what your return on investment is versus just coming from a place of absolute generosity right but again being mindful about it because the other thing too that I really believe is that you know being being overly generous or over giving isn't a sign of generosity it's a sign of insecurity right so there there is a point of over giving which I have a hundred percent been guilty of in my lifetime and it's it's something I'm I'm still working on um, because it does feel so good to give but there are times that I think sometimes we're we're giving and you know I there's a friend of mine who is part of a multi-level marketing company and I in like you said Susie with this friend of yours I've watched her do this where she would overgive with the hopes that her being so generous was going to uh, evoke some kind of response from the other person. But I think that when we are giving from a place of either like being over generous in, in hopes that somebody's gonna like us or being over generous in the hopes that, or with the expectation like your friend Sue's, um, that it's gonna that it's gonna yield some kind of return. I don't think that that formula exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. I don't think that formula ever wins. Mm -hmm. No, because because you know people are smart. They see right through you. They see right through that. You know, or they feel it, right, yeah, Susie? They feel it. They see it, and there's this kind of like ickiness about it. So yeah, they can sense it. it. Yeah. Can I can I jump in? Is that okay? Please, yeah. please, I'd love it. First of all, love you guys. This is awesome. You know, and look, look how pretty you look. Oh, well, you <laughs> made my day. Thank you very much. You're so um, welcome. Thank you, Sean Marine. Uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this and it's like, and I just want you guys to know, and I don't think it'll shock any of you, but, you know, I grew up in, in business in the 80s and the 90s, and it was like I was groomed and trained to be able to look at if I give, then I need to look at the ROI and the relationship, right? I mean, that was what it was. And it's, it's fascinating to me on this piece of it because honestly, it's like I've struggled with, with this because I look at it and I go, if I give, then I 
I measure. I mean, that's how I'm taught in business, right? You're taught about facts and figures and statistics and, and, and the ROI. And yet what's different now, I think post 2000 and above is that there is that giving nature of people that really does change things. But I, I, I'm just saying out there, I've struggled with it because I do. I've evaluated relationships in the past in, in business for me where I go, if I'm giving you a referral and I'm like supporting you, I'm like, hello. It's like, where's the, where's the, the, the whiff on back, you know? And it's hard thing not to measure. And yet the, the surprising part of it is what I've learned over the years I've been in business is when I do give the person that I've given to is not necessarily where it's like, I've gotten the give back. So it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like you can't track it, but I don't know what you guys think, but it's been hard and yet fascinating. And I don't think there's a magic science to it, which is like, to me, irritatingly frustrating. So I'm going to go there. Yeah. I you can't measure it, Michelle. No, <laughs> and I hate it. You, you, can't you measure know it. me. You there are no statistics. Ah, <laughs> killing me. It's killing me, y'all. You know what, though, Michelle, what, what I want to say to that is that I, I do believe that there are enough metrics that there is plenty of the giving that can be measured. Right. So, so just like a, for example, if you were like, okay, so we're going to, we're going to give out or raffle six memberships a year and that's going to cost X amount of money because of our lunches and our online and our employees and our overhead and all of that. And what we're going to be looking for is a return from this segment of our business. To me, that is a lot different, Michelle, than, than you sitting down with me or Susie or Patty or Adrian or anybody on this call uh, over a glass of wine to talk business or to share referrals or to give some advice or to be a sounding board, that is a huge give and your time is worth something and my time is worth something, but that is a way that we can, you can still measure it. You can still be like, well, wow. So technically my time is worth X amount an hour and I just spent three hours with this person, but it's almost like you can like go home and like put that in your little, like in your little jar of, of good deeds done, you know? So, and, and I, and I, and I'm, seriously not trying to be facetious but for somebody who metrics and measuring feel good to you mm -hmm. right and and what i want to say michelle is i think it's really important to honor that that's how you're wired right that that having being able to track things feels really good to you i know for me um what feels really good to me is to have really deep, heart-centered, super authentic conversations with people and know that I'm helping people move the needle forward on their business or their life. And I have given away a ton of that for free, which I, you know, I've definitely gotten pushback, you know, from my husband who's like, are you doing that again? And are you charging this person for that? But here's the thing that I know, Michelle, from a business perspective, that strategy of constantly giving my time away is not the wisest, but when I can pull that back and be strategic and really look at the benefit and the joy that I got out of those countless hours that I've spent with business uh, associates or past clients or current clients or friends and not charge them for, I know that I was rewarded. What I need to do strategically is get my shit together so that I've got my paying clients over here so that I am so well vested in my business that I can allow for these other areas where I get to be off the clock, where I don't have to track it. But I'm also, Michelle, as you know, like I'm not designed that way. Like I, I, I'm not, I, I don't, it would be really fun, I think, to, to, if my mind worked in the way of tracking systems, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to say is I think that one of the things is really honoring who we are and the way that we're built and the way that we operate that brings us joy. And that's the beautiful thing about you, Michelle, is I think that that does bring you joy. I think that those little columns and those line items and, um, because your brain operates that way. But I, I think that we have to be willing to look at it strategically, identify where do we have it to give? Where do we not have it to give? What is our bottom line? Like what is our, our 
break even, drop dead. We have to make this every month, no matter what. And if we're not making this, then maybe what we do, and I'm really saying this to all of us and to myself, if we're not making the nut, then maybe what we need to do is pull back on the freebies. And I'm not saying completely do away with being generous, but like if, if we recognize that we're giving so much away and we're getting no return, that doesn't make sense. Like that's not sustainable. And that again begins to put that pressure on us where we feel, you know, constricted and tense and under this pressure and overwhelmed. So again, the, the, thing I love about tonight's topic is it's really about creating this cycle, right? It is creating the cycle about giving and receiving and giving and receiving so that energetically we can just keep that flow going. But Michelle, I will tell you from being in business 30 years that, that when I have really given in a, in a place and from a place of pure generosity, it is rare and I can probably count on two hands in 30 years that it's happened, but it is rare that that is where the return comes from. Right. But what it does is it creates this opening and Michelle, if, and now this is something, if you started tracking this, you would see that what I'm saying is absolutely true, that you will begin to have these opportunities open up or, or somebody say, Hey, Michelle, there's this gig and they want you to come and speak and they're going to pay you $10,000. And you think it happened randomly and you think that it just fell out of the sky. But I guarantee you, if you were to track back all of the wonderful things that you did, all the places that you were generous, where you opened up and gave with that expectation, that this is just the way that it works. And I know this sounds a little esoteric for some of you, but, or maybe it doesn't. Um, but that's really, really how it works. And I'll tell you a super so short story. I I've had two different apparel businesses. Um, but years ago when the whole housing crisis thing was going on, I thought that John and I were going to lose our house. Like literally we made a really bad decision. We got into business. I almost said we got into bed, but I don't want to go there again. Um, we, we got into business with, uh, or a business agreement with somebody and it was just, it was a bad deal all the way around and we thought we were going to lose our house. And I was leaving no stone unturned and nothing was happening. And then literally out of the blue, an existing client called me and she said, I need 3,500 scarves in 45 days. Our scarves are manufactured overseas. Um, it was a $98,000 order and our margins on our apparel are very healthy. I got a hold of my manufacturer in China and I said, look, I know this is completely unheard of, but I need 3,500 scarves in 45 days and I don't even have the design yet. So we were literally proving, um, there's somebody in the waiting room. Oh no, I'm sorry. It was a chat. Uh, we were literally approving samples over cell phone pictures. Um, Sam had the machine set up to print the scarves waiting for me to get an approval from my client who was in Florida. And anyway, miraculously, we pulled this off. She got the scarves five days before she needed them. And it was, it felt like a miracle, but it wasn't a miracle, but that, that gift came from a completely different source than where I ever thought that it would. And I'm going to tell you this too, Michelle, all of the places that I went to who I thought would show up for me because I had shown up for them, uh, with so much openness, it didn't happen it didn't come through. And so it was one of those lessons again, like, first of all, we have to be willing to look where, uh, we have to be willing to be surprised. We have to leave no stone unturned. And I think that we have to be open to the possibility that it is gonna come from a completely different channel and quite possibly a channel or an avenue or a business or a colleague or a partner that we've not even met yet. Like, I think that we, we have to give ourselves permission to the element of surprise and to be open to miracles. But I think that's what, that's, what's been so interesting in learning this, Sean Marie, is that, you know, that was how I was trained. That was what business people in my, oh my God, generation were trained on. And yet what's been interesting, even in CWI is is that we've had a philosophy and a strategy of giving back. Like we raise money for nonprofits. That's great. That feels good. You know what I mean? It feels so good to do good. 
but yet in my head always it's always that what you were trained at that is a hard you know rewiring to say that it's like if i give you a referral if i talk you up then what's the roi for me and, it, and it's like it's just it's upbringing it's um what we're trained at and that's a hard thing to kind of change and and modify but yet i think there's elements that are bigger and that I've learned. I go, you know what? It's not just about the individual piece. It's like how, like sometimes in Starbucks or whatever, what can we do to give back? It's like, can I do one individual thing? Can we do a bigger thing? I remember, and I, I'm going to shut up after this, but I was on a nonprofit and I remember I was sitting on a board and it was like all this stuff. I mean, there were the people that were the bleeding heart people. And then there, my time was there and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I got I got stuff to do. And yet at the end of the day, it's like, I finally went to the nonprofit leader as a CEO. And I said, you know, I don't think my time is best spent in, in being part of your board and giving my time. How can I help you raise money? And they were just like, wow. Okay. Now we're talking, right? So we all Absolutely. have kind of our, our pieces that we're talented in. And I think that's what I've learned differently and how to be able to support. But I still, in the back of my head, I'm always looking at ROI. So I just well, want to I, that. Yeah. If I can interject here too, I'm thinking that there's sometimes a, this concept of scarcity, there's only so much to go around. And, you know, early when I first went out as an entrepreneur, when I left corporate, started my own company, I was working with a woman that we worked okay together as long as it was her show. And the minute I began to get some traction in some of the stuff I was doing, she was very threatened, which was a super shock to me and i and i you know began to realize that she op operated from a place of scarcity and i operated from a place of man there is a boatload of people who need help there's mm -hmm. a whole lot of people who need you know what we have to offer them whether it's you or whether it's me or or whatever and i think that when you have it kind of goes back to something you said earlier susie about when you have this mindset of a i'm giving to you with an open hand it's not a quid pro quo, I'm not expecting to get for the give, then there is something in that that just works. You can't be stupid about it, you know? And I think we've all probably gotten to the place where we've like, we've given, 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 and then all of a sudden you're like, I can't pay my mortgage this month, you know? But at the same time, when the intent was to serve, you know, and to be of, of use to somebody, I just, I have a really strong belief that that comes back to you. Mm. Yeah. And it's also knowing your own limitations and like, mm -hmm. Michelle, you knew, well, this is what I have to give you, but I can't do this. You know, like, this is what I can do Good. and being okay with that, being okay with this is all I can do really. And I'm happy to do it for you. Um, and just that awareness of knowing that like the point you were making, Sean Marie, being aware and of it's going to come back somewhere. It's going to come back someplace, somewhere, somehow. And for me, because I've done this kind of work and I've been more aware of this kind of thing, I'm always looking for those times. I'm on the lookout for when something's going to come back to me and I can trace it back to when, hey, oh, I remember. I, you know, I talked to this person months ago and it's happened to me and it's so much fun when that happens. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget like giving my business card to um, a person uh, and giving them some information. And, and it was two years later, two years later, they came walking in my shop and said, where's, the, where's, who's, I don't want to buy some tires from her, you know? And it's like, <laughs> wow. That's right. And it's, uh, that is the miracle that you're talking about, Sean. That's like really fun when that kind of thing happens. And it will happen. It will happen. And just uh, being aware and knowing that when you're putting that giving energy out, that it's going to come back to you. Um, and I think that's where if you're expecting it to come back to you, that's where there's bitter bitterness and resentment. Um, and it's going to go wrong. And I've seen it happen that way. And Susie, and, I, and I'm, I'm really glad that you put it that way because I think that there is a difference between expecting it to come back and needing something to come back, right? So, and I, I think too, and I, I had written this down, um, 
I think it's really important to know what it is that you need, right? And, and not kid yourself about it or not kid your team about that and say, this is what we need. And if it doesn't, what did she say? You're in a claim. Oh, am I, is my is my thing coming through again? I have to get a curtain or something. You're oh, glowing. Yeah, You're, You're like glowing. glowing. Every, every time that happens, I tell Adrian that I think it's Eve. It's Eve, like, oh, <laughs> joining us. Oh, yeah, oh. It, it's it's my little angel, everybody. She's so to us. I love She that. is. She I is. She's that. like, what are you girls up to? Um, but I think it is about knowing what it is that we need. And so I think that, that for me, again, this is just my personal experience and my opinion and philosophy, but I think that if we can give with an open heart and an open hand and give lovingly without expectation, but also knowing from a business perspective, like a pro, like the pros that we are, that this is what we need, that this is what we need to be bringing into our business, that this is the revenue that we need to be creating this month, and understanding that it doesn't need to come from that direct source. But I think that we will plan differently. And I also think that there is an aspect of generosity when we tell the truth. And what I mean by that, kind of going off of what Michelle was sharing with us, if we are developing a strategic partnership with another company or an ally or a person, I think if we can go to them and be completely direct and say, this is my expectation, this is my need, this is what we are able to give, and this is what I'm asking you for in return. Because I think like Susie, you were saying, like when that crunchiness happens, when that bitterness or that resentment starts to, starts to build up, in my personal experience, it has been because I've not taken responsibility to be crystal clear about what my expectation is and what I need, because it is quite possible and happens a lot that we go into these relationships that are not aligned, where we're not completely forthright, not because we're trying to withhold something from them, we just don't really wanna have the difficult conversation of asking for what it is that we need. And we want it to be symbiotic and we want it to be easy and feel good. And everybody's so happy to be part of this, you know, collective creative thing that we're putting together. But if we don't go into that totally telling the truth that this is what I need, this is what I expect from you, the bottom's going to fall out of it. And somebody is going to feel like they came out on the short end of the stick. The deal is not going to be equitable. Um, and you probably shouldn't have done it to begin with, right? So I think that the act of telling the absolute truth, hence truth is the new black, right? That's, that's really what our conversations go back to is how do we get to the truth of the matter? How do we take personal responsibility for our own part? How do we really unearth our deepest truth, even if it's uncomfortable, because what if we're going into a situation and what we really want from this partner is $10,000. But what we're trying to do is like, we're trying to dance around it and we're trying to say, well, this would be great if, or maybe we could. And I think that those watered down truths, when we don't say the difficult things, not only are we letting ourselves, um, go into a place where it is, it's murky and it doesn't feel very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think that we are also, uh, we're selling the person that we're talking to or that we're in this negotiation with, I think we're selling them short, right? Because we're not holding the standard of expecting them to be able to rise and meet us where we're at. So what it does like vibrationally, and I, I hate to use that term. I know it's a little airy fairy, but I'm going to use it anyway. I feel like what it does vibrationally is it brings everything down. Like it just, it brings down this thing that could have been really robust and really exciting and really successful for everybody. And it's almost like it brings it down to a murmur. And it's like, yeah, we could do this and this could feel good. And then things start to get ambiguous and people get a little vague and then they don't call back and they don't email. And I think it's because the structure and the foundation kind of fell apart at the very beginning. So I think for any of us, and again, I'm, when I say these things, I'm also like saying them to myself. I think that the opportunity is to be really, really clear and really honest with ourselves about what is it that we need what is it that we expect? 
how can we create these really vibrant relationships while also creating a path for complete, open generosity where it is absolutely giving for the sake of giving. And, and somebody had said in the chat, um, Adrian said that her dad calls it paying forward. Other people call it building karma. I totally agree. And Michelle Farrell suggested a really great book called The Go-Giver. So there's a lot of resource sources out there, um, including having these kinds of conversations with our, with our colleagues and our partners and our, you know, our sisters in crime to say like, hey, I'm really struggling in this area or hey, I want to do this or this isn't feeling very good. And I think just being able to have a place where we can have some safe conversations about what's working and what isn't working. I also like, can I interject? And please, honey. Yes, it's open to everybody, please. Um, I really liked also the comment about giving to your strengths. I feel like if you give to your weaknesses, you just feel drained so much faster and there's almost no way you can be repaid for it, right? Because absolutely. Just taking you, yeah, it's taking too much from you. But like Michelle was saying, like if you give to your strengths, if you can. Maybe your time on the board isn't what you need, but you can help them with fundraising and they are extremely grateful and that's an easier thing for you to give. That would be my strength, but it, it's your strength. And that's the thing is that all of us have different strengths. And when we give with our strength, it's not so hard for you. It doesn't drain you. You don't need to do all kinds of self-care after it, right? You can, you can give it and it's easier for you, but then, like Susie said, you go to your support network. Maybe there's something else that you know that this friend can do and they're really good at it. And absolutely, then they can give that part, right? And just kind of building your network to be able to fill in all of the pieces where everyone can give in a way that they like to give and but, everyone up. Yeah. Can I add to that, Christy? Because I feel like this is like more of a women versus a men thing. You guys can disagree, but <clears throat> ask somebody who like deals with women all day long, 24 seven. It's interesting because <laughs> like men have no problem asking for something that they've given. And women, it's like, I instinctively hear over and over and over, I'm not kidding, over and over and over, how much time they've given but one of the questions I've learned to ask, I mean, again, in my struggle, right? I give and I give and I give. And then it's like, I go, well, wait a minute, there's supposed to be ROI there. So I have to like, let go of that. But women, we don't ask. And it's like, damn, it's like, that needs to change. Because if we're giving, then, then there's no problem with saying, and what about, you know, I mean, like, can I get a piece of it? It's like, you know, is there going to be a commission? It's like, you know, well, what about if I'm giving value to you, what's going to be the reciprocity there? So, I, I mean, I'd love to explore that because I just feel like women circumvent their own success on that because they don't ask, ask for the reciprocity. Well, the, there's a truth bomb sitting on my desk, Michelle. I don't, I, I'm not sure because of the camera. Bomb. Can you see it? it? Exceptions are made, me. <laughs> I love it. So I don't know if you girls could see it, but it says exceptions are made, ask for them. And uh, that's the one that I pulled this morning. And I think that to what you're saying, Michelle, um, and that's kind of what I was uh, commenting on earlier, just about us going into these conversations, being bold and courageous and asking for what it is that we want, because I, it, and, and not from a place of, obviously not from a place of wanting something where we're not going to deliver in return. And I think that when we can do that and when we can walk away from the table because it's not a good deal, it's not equitable, um, it's not the right fit, it just elevates everybody, I think, to a higher standard. But I, but I think you're right, Michelle. I think men have no problem asking. And like I was saying, like women tend to, and this is not all women, but I think that with our with our nature to be nurturers and giving and, and all this flexibility and being pretty watery, et cetera. Um, like I said, we just, we, we like dampen the tone. We, we, we make exceptions. We give longer, you know, I think we just give a lot of allowances where it doesn't serve us. And I, and I'm going to go back on something that I said, um, 
when we were talking earlier, Michelle, about you not being able to track that. Actually, Susie just shared a few minutes ago how she does track it. So Susie, that might be a secret that you have to share with Michelle, that it, that it actually is in some way, in some esoteric way, it, it is trackable. Teach me, Susie, teach me. I will, and I, I wanted to add to that. And I think that when you do, when you are clear and you're transparent and you're telling someone what you expect back from what you're going to give to them, that's a give right there. You're giving them the opportunity to say yes or no. A hundred percent. For you. That's a give right there. And you know, that takes away that icky feeling, the bitterness. It just puts it all out there on the table. Um, if you can just communicate that. I mean, I was thinking of Shamri when you were talking about, you know, expectations. It's like a married couple, right? And you like, you want your husband to read your mind and just know what you want. To do. <laughs> like, um, and that never happens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and then there's bitterness and, you know, all of that thing. Um, but, you know, yeah, ask for what you want. I mean, if you're going to give and you're, you have a good relationship with somebody and you, you're, you know that they have something that you need and can get back from them and it's going to be a great deal and it's good for both of you. Yeah, put it on the table. That's a give right there to each other because then you're giving that person the opportunity to, to say, yeah, let's make this deal. I'm going to give it this. And instead of expecting it back in some weird, yeah, they're reading your mind kind of way. That's where I've seen my friend who I was referring to have bitterness and it doesn't, and it didn't work because he expected all of this business to come his way. The people, it didn't come and oh, it was just a, a huge catastrophe. And, and you know, Susie, I want, I want to say too, to what you're saying about, um, it is a gift to them, but it also, like, it saves everybody time, yeah. right? Like, if, if we think about the amount of time that we have all probably at one point or another, when, in one deal or another, with one negotiation or another, that we've wasted at the table or on phone calls or in emails trying to massage this thing into place. And I think that that is one of the areas where men or people with that, with people that are connected more to their masculine energy, right? People that are just ballers and great negotiators and they can cut through all of the minutia. I think that that is where we have a lot to learn from them, whether it is men or women, is that they have this ability to go in and cut through it so that we can actually get to work, right? So that we can actually get on with the business at hand that we want to be doing together. And, you know, Michelle, you've heard me say this before that from a sales perspective, one of the things that I've gotten really good at is getting to the yes or the no very quickly. But there's other areas in my life where I haven't applied that same philosophy, but it would really serve me because I don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time and I don't want to waste my time. So how can we just have a conversation, identify that this is worthy of taking the next step or moving things forward. And I think the only way that we can do that and spare ourselves a lot of agony and all of the other adjectives that we use to describe how that feels um, is to really bring a hundred percent of our honesty and bring the truth to the table and just show our cards. You know, I think that that's, I, and, and I'm just going to speak for myself. I won't speak for anyone else, but um, there are definitely areas where my boundaries are really watery and where I need to tighten things up in that regard. So I, I'm a, I'm, I'm going to identify, hi, I'm Sean Marie and I am a work in progress. <laughs> I'm there with you. Sean Marie. I'm like, totally there. And then Abby is like coming along with us right there. She is. Hi, Abby. Hey, Adrian. Oh my God. She's such a diva. Seriously. She is. She is. She absolutely. Not a CWI it. meeting without her. <laughs> that's right. It's possible. That's right. But if I try and like hole her up in a bedroom or something, then all she'll do is just howl, which is really <laughs> unpleasant. Uh, one thing I just, I was thinking about in terms of Michelle, what you were saying um, is I wonder if part of coming into it is being clear about what is a business strategy versus what's a gift. Mm, right. Hey. What's a what? Hey, uh, let's create a win-win, which is what everybody wants, right? Um, Indeed. You so I, I think that there is that a difference of that. Whereas opposed to, hey, I'm 
just putting this out there in the universe, you know, and call it karma or, you know, I mean, I was fortunate in that I was raised with that philosophy of my dad's like, you pay it forward because you never know, you know, it may be that somebody's already helped you and it's your turn. And it's, he also uh, kind of raised me with a philosophy that a lot of times we can't pay somebody back in the same way. Right. And it is okay to pay that forward. It may be that that person actually doesn't need your help or, mm. you know, not in a way that they, you know, especially if it's a mentor, right? Somebody maybe mentored them. So right. they're paying it forward. There are different ways to, to think about it. And it sounds kind of funny because I mean, you know, yeah, it could no, be I think it's borrowing deep. a lawnmower and it could be, you know, business strategy. It's just, you know, it could be donations. It, and it is, I thought that was a really great point that you made, Michelle, about realizing where you could make the most impact. You know, that let, me, was let me help with fundraising. And you said that that was such an aha, like, yes, it may not be about what they think they need or what they think they're looking for. It may be that you have another piece to offer that's even better yeah. that they didn't even think to ask for. Mm. Can I say thank you? Because honestly, Adrian, seriously, this is what's so different about uh, women and men. And I don't mean to make the whole gender difference, but I think I've softened a lot in the 12 years now in like leading a women's organization because it's like, I, I probably give more now, you know, to, organizations or try to fundraise or try to give back in a different way because it's a female centric thing. And it's like when you grow up in the male centric world in business, it's always about ROI. Like what am I getting back for what I give in? And you're just like, Oh my God, let's lose that shit. Sorry. I, I don't know if it's okay to swear on truth is the new black, but I will. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> but, and I think the thing is, like women do it differently. And it's like, I embrace that. And it's like, I feel greater about that. I don't, I don't need to look at tit for tat anymore. It's like, I would rather give and give and give. And we do, I mean, you guys know we do. And it's like, at the same time, it's totally changed my mindset. So I don't mean to dominate the conversation. I just want to go, man, what I was trained for and what I was brought up in the business world to be is not what I am today. And it's like, I feel like that has been a huge learning curve and it's like I feel better about like you said Susie I have not read that book but the give and the take I'm not looking at the take anymore I'm looking at the give and the give comes back 10,000 freaking fold or fucking fold and it's like that's like amazing I'm sorry Patty I had to use the f-bomb it's just me I'm sorry but I feel great so we're good <laughs> You know, and 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 I I, sh I probably should have taken a consensus on on that question, Michelle. It's it's okay with me, but I so I apologize for speaking for everyone. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but it's how I roll. Christina. Yeah, it's really it's really fun um, being aware, just being aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, when you have something really amazing come to you from out of nowhere, think about it. Think about where maybe it came yeah. from. Yeah. And, you know, and on, on that note, Susie, thank you. And, and Michelle, thank you for what you shared and uh, Adrian and, and actually everyone that has shared. It's been really wonderful. And I think that, um, you know, the one thing we didn't touch on was giving to ourselves. And I think that that is, again, for women, you know, we are so often, you know, the last person on the you know, on the list of, of people who, who need something. So <clears throat> I think possibly those times when we are feeling depleted or overwhelmed or a little resentful, I think that it's a really great opportunity and an invitation to like take a minute, take a half a day or half an hour and just regroup and use the power of the pen and, you know, write out some things, get some things out of our system. Uh, okay. Bye, Michelle. Michelle Farrell needs to leave. Bye, Bye darling. Thank, thank you so much for being here tonight, Michelle. Um, but, you know, really doing a little bit of a, you know, of a, of a, of a mind release or a brain dump or whatever you want to call it and get into some creative strategizing. Mm 
you know, just like, you know, this is what we need to do. This is what I need to focus on. And maybe even do a little bit of an inventory taking of, um, you know, depending upon just what's coming to the surface, but like, oh my gosh, I overgave over here and that didn't feel very good. Or I'm feeling a little resentful or I'm feeling disappointed or my feelings are hurt that so-and-so didn't get back to me or that deal went to someone else. And like, just kind of unearth the thing that is, that is making us feel a little stuck you know, so that we can, so that we can get back into that rhythm of things moving slowly and the gears turning and, you know, all the, I could give a hundred different analogies, but I won't, but just, you know, doing some exercises so that we can move back into that place of being good to ourselves so that we have more to give so that we're thinking more clearly and I know all of this probably sounds like old hat, but you know, are we staying hydrated? Are we moving enough? Do we need to go for a walk? Do we need to take a bath? Do we need to call a girlfriend? Do we need to just like ditch the day and go see a movie? Um, like what can we do to replenish ourselves? Because it's a lot of work. Like this is a lot of work to hold a business together and to keep, keep it all together, especially in the midst of everything that is happening right now in the world, like tensions are high, we're feeling fatigued, we don't get to see each other. Um, you know, there's no this, no hug. No, exactly, you know, not to mention all of the emotional, social justice, you know, all of that work that is going on for people that are out marching and protesting and advocating and reading and learning and staying up, it's like, you know, it's, it's a lot to run a business ladies on a good day. You know, so we add all of these other things. I think that we have to ask ourselves, like, what can I do? What's one thing I can do for myself today? Because I think that if we are completely depleted, we, we don't have anything to give. And that was kind of where Susie and I started off the conversation. What happens when we're completely depleted, but what, where we didn't take it is, what do we do for ourselves when we're depleted? Mm -hmm. Right? How do we, how do we re-engage and reconnect so that we can- Cheers. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Oh, mine's almost empty. We'll go with that. <laughs> Mine Cheers. is empty, so it's... Cheers, <laughs> darlings. <clears throat> well, ladies, I, I just want to take everybody's temperature really quickly. So it's 639. I want to be super respectful of everybody's time, but I, I would like to, Patty, if, if, if you... Um, if it's okay with you as our producer and Michelle as our founder, um, I would just like to open it up to anybody uh, before we wrap up that maybe had something to share, had a question, or um, just if anybody needs to check in before we sign off for the night. I just had one more thing to add Please, about Adrian. you um, talking about taking care of yourself and giving back to yourself. And it's something else that as women, I think we are not as good at, which is remembering that we can say no. Oh, please. So please. That. Mm. Sometimes that's really taking care of yourself. Oh my God, the power of no. Yes, please. Okay, no, thank no, you. No, thank you. Yes, that's better. Yes. Not women's way, right? Not no. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, um, Michelle, what does Londi say? Oh, um, I understand. I understand. Yes. <laughs> we'll save that it's for another cover. Yeah. On yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you. I understand. <sighs> okay. Anybody else? Isabel or Chris? Oh, Christy, you did share with us. Thank you, honey. Um, yeah, Isabel, we haven't heard from you. Would you like to share before we go, darling? I like the conversation and I agree with many things and when I was listening to you I and Michelle I think like I was thinking just in social media because I think that's the big difference we have nowadays with for example maybe when Michelle you started in business now as you create your channel you are going to give that you're going to be you the, the goal is to give and give and give and maybe you're going to have that ROI in one or two years and that was my example and it happens to me like Susie said like I had before a business online project and that was like a, I don't know maybe three years ago I finished and this year someone called me like hey I want you uh, I'm ready now to, to take the service and I was like 
oh, thank you so much. It was like, a, I felt like that, like, a, wow, <laughs> something I did right. <laughs> I don't, I did a lot of things wrong, but something I did right. <laughs> like, a, oh, thank you so much, but we are not in business anymore. But I referred that person and, you know, to the other areas. And that was what I learned. Uh, and that, that's what I want to say with social media, because that's what I had been learning with social media. You give. Before, maybe 40 years ago, we used to uh, say, okay, I'm selling this. But now we have to give more explanation. Yeah. More, mm. more value. And maybe that is going to return in one or two years. But someone's going to remember that. So absolutely like all of this conversation because i remember i used to my goal was people to enroll in my program but i was focused for example in subjects but i was working with immigrants so what do they care about what what are their needs even mm -hmm. if i'm not going to be offering that service i have to talk about other services that they may be interesting in where they can go and validate their certificates that they got in their countries so that's not a service that I'm offering, but I know that it's a plus. It's going to take me time to research. But many people came for that. So oh, I'm not doing that, but, and that's what I think. That's the, maybe one, two years later, it's going to come to you. I think like a, it, it's always going to come. Maybe in one hour, in five years, but it's always come back to you. Absolutely, Isabel. And, and, I, and I think too, knowing what it is that you need Right, like I, I think if, if we're not identifying what it is that we need, then how in the world are we supposed to be calling that in or generating that or making that happen in our, in our businesses, right? And because again, kind of to what you were saying, Michelle, I think some of that pressure of not getting something back in return is also happening when we are feeling pressure, when, when we have these expectations in our business that we need to meet, that aren't being met, and then we we do this act of generosity, and because we are we are still in a place of need, like we're looking to this person that we made this exchange with, like, well, maybe it'll come back from them. But when our businesses are fat and happy, and and we and we can take the pressure off of thinking about that part of it, and I'm not saying don't track, I'm not saying don't measure metrics at all, but I think we have to know what it is that we need and and i think that you had said it adrian are we in a position to give to the degree that we were giving last month you know i don't think that there is anything wrong with having to pull back a little bit on where we are giving so that we can give more to our businesses and our employees and our staff and our own creative process um so that we can get ourselves back to a place where that that where we can stay open to that. But I, I think what you were saying was really beautiful, Isabel. Am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Okay, okay, wonderful. Thank you. But it's thank you, thank name. you. Isabel. Isabel. It, is, it is beautiful. I used to everything, Isabella, Isabel. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. All right, my loves. Well, if, if there are no burning desires for any uh, final comments, I will, I will close us out. But uh, last call, it's two o'clock or, I don't, Susie, what time do they close the bar? The, <laughs> 2 a.m., yeah. <laughs> two, okay, ladies, it's 2 a.m., last call. <laughs> so does anybody else wanna share before we wrap things up tonight? Okay, I can't stand it. I have to share one more. Please, yes. It, it like kills me. It's like the whole thing about the training is that whenever you feel like you're pressured and you're stressed about how much you're giving to others, it's always fascinating to me that when you start thinking about what am I getting, and I got to read that book, Susie, Give and Take, because I've only read The Go-Giver, but one of the pieces I love in that book is when you're feeling stressed or angst, it's like, just go give more. Give to somebody else. It's like, try that. And it's like, all of a sudden, your whole mindset changes. You know what I mean? It's like, go go raise money for somebody. Go, like you said, Sean Marie, give, give to somebody in the Starbucks lane to pay, pay backwards, to pay it forward. And that, you know, when you're starting to feel like I'm not getting enough, when you start to go, what can I do to give more? It really changes your mindset. And that's been a huge aha for me in a different way to go, how can I go raise money for somebody? How can I do different things? How can we like support a nonprofit? 
And all of a sudden, the get becomes really tenfold, but I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. You know, they say generous people have more to give. And so I think, again, it's that, it's that cycle in that loop. But, but I think that you, I think you really brought our, our conversation to a beautiful close, Michelle. So thank you so much. And ladies, I just want to thank you so much for being here. And uh, Patty, I do want to open it up to you again, darling. When is your next online forum? Oh my goodness, you put me on the spot. Oh, um, I'm the sorry, one, I'm no, sorry, the darling. It is July 1st, and it's actually with Isabel. Um, oh, it is. And she is going to be talking about the census and why we should respond to the census, what it's all about. So That is so, I'm so glad I asked. Isabel, I will definitely tune in to hear you talk about the census. It's so important. So July 1st, and Patty, is that at 5.30? No, it's at noon. It's an at noon. anything. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Fantastic. Well, ladies, I look forward to seeing you at another happier hour or luncheon or one of Patty's wonderful events. And I will be back with you next month uh, with our wonderful guest, Kim Lowe. And we are talking about compassionate conversations and the power of change. So I hope that you will join us. And I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes by one of my favorite what, authors. What day oh, is that? I'm sorry, darling. What day is that next month? Who said that? Was that Christy? 22nd, I believe. Is it July 22nd? I believe it. Yes, it is July 22nd. Thank you, Patty. See, she knows my dates and not her dates. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I need to take her with me everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. <laughs> so July 22nd at 530 with, with Kim Lowe, uh, Compassionate Conversations and the Power of Change. So, so Tony Hoagland says, some people think the truth is the worst thing that can happen. The truth is not the worst thing that can happen. So I will leave you with that, my friends. And thank you so much for being on Truth is the New Black. And I loved having you. And I'll see all of you really soon. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.